Welcome to Engineer's Mindset. Now, let's say we are giving this section, it's an I section, and we are asked to determine the centroids of the section. Okay, so as always, um, in the previous video, I said the first thing to do is simply what to what split these sections into what different segments. So notice that if I cut here into two, I split here, and also I split I split here. This have actually become what a single three different segments all together. So I have there to be a section one or segment one. I can call this segment two. I can call this segment three. Okay, so which means I have three different what sections that mix up what this system. So it's called a composite sec sec section. All right. Also, notice that this height, okay, the width of this first section is given as what 10 millimeters, but distance from point A down to this point is given as 15 millimeters. So, which means I can actually find the height of this other segment as from this point, um, from this point to this point, I can find the height of this segment simply from here to here. To simply be what um, simply if from here to here is 10 remove them from 50 that simply gives me what 40 millimeters so that becomes the height of this segment or the depth of this segment the width of this segment is given here as 10 millimeters so i have now three different segments so i can now form my table to start to define what okay to start solving for the centroids i said the very best method to use is the tabular method so we start with the tabular method First of all, you split them into what segments. So we have components. We have about three components now. Okay. We have components. We have the first component, which is this. Okay. We have the second component. And we have the third component finally, which is this. Okay. We have the third component. So after splitting into what components, I said the next thing to do is to find the area of each of these components. I also stated in the first video that do not convert these um, distances to meters or these heights or whatever to meters. Just leave them as what millimeter because we are going to be calculating everything in terms of millimeter. Okay, so we have area. Okay, the area is also in millimeter um, squared. So we have area. So we'll calculate the area of each of these components. The first component is um, we have the width of this component to be 30 millimeter and we have the depth of this component to be 10 millimeter. So the area is simply what 30 by 10, which simply gives us 300 millimeter. So this area is simply what 300. So we'll keep that aside. Next is the area of the second component, which is here. The width is 10 millimeter and the depth is simply what 40 millimeter. So multiply the two of them together. 10 by 40 simply gives us 400 millimeter. Okay, so the area of the second segment is 400 okay finally the third segment the width here remains 10 sorry the depth here is 10 and the width is simply 50 millimeters so multiply them together 50 by 10 gives us the area of the third ship so we simply have 50 by 10 which is 500 okay so next thing i said after obtaining these areas all you do is what sum the area up so we simply use sigma a to represent that Okay, summation A, sum the area up. So I have 500 plus 400, that's 900, plus 300, and that's simply 1,200. So the total area is simply 1,200 millimeter squared. So this becomes the area of what the entire segment. So I said after obtaining the area, the next thing to do is to find what is called central distance X and central distance Y. Okay, so that's the next column. So we have centroid distance x, centroid distance x, okay, centroid distance x. And I gave an illustration in the first video that on a 2 force system, we have that this, okay, we have this simply to be our 2 force system. This position is called the y axis, and this is called simply the x axis. So, which means if I look at this beam now, or if I look at this seg segment now, this is simply what the y axis for what this particular segment. This height is simply the y axis for this particular segment, while this width is simply what the x axis for this particular segment. So, this is the x axis and this is the y axis for this segment. The same thing happens here. This height now is simply the y axis for the second segment, 
mean why this width here is simply the x-axis for the second segment. Same thing happens, this height is the y-axis for the second segment, while this width is the x-axis for the second segment. So that's the first knowledge you should know. Secondly, I said if you want to take the centroidal distance of each of these components, they must all come down to what is called the reference line. The reference point is the point that all the words, all the components actually was have a ground value. Okay, the point where all the components actually has a ground value. So we have about three sections here. The reference point is simply what this point, the very last shape that makes up the segment, the very last line or last shape that makes up the segment that gives us the reference points. So simply this point here is F. Okay, so we'll have that to be a reference line. Okay, so simply this line FH. So we can state here FH is the reference line. So everything we are doing now must come down to the reference line. FH is the reference line simply what from this point down towards this point. F and H is the reference line. So taking our central distance, we must always bring everything down to the reference line. Everything must come down to the reference line. Okay, now I want to find central distance X. When is a centroid? It simply means centroid simply means dividing into two bisecting. That's what centroid is. So if I should find a centroid, a central point on this shape, find a central point on this shape. Of course, this is central point. Sorry, forgive me. My diagram is not so accurate. Okay, but this should happen to be the central central point. Now I want to find the centroid in the x-axis. Centroid distance x. Remember for the first shape, I said this is the x-axis, while this is the y-axis. So which means if I want to find central distance x, I need to divide or cut through the what the x plane into two. Central simply means divide into two or cut through into two. So it means I need to cut what the x plane into two, and that is simply what bisecting this plane into two, or bisecting this plane into two. That's what it means. So I now bisect this plane and that plane is simply what the distance in the x-axis which is simply what the width given as 30 millimeter so i simply have this to be 30 divided by 2 but it doesn't end there i said every um every central distance must always take place at what the reference line so which means if i cut this into 2 30 divided by 2 i still have to move all the way from this point to this point covering what this height of 40 millimeter I also have to move from this point to this point to get to the reference line. So you must cut through all and get them down to the reference line. First of all, I bisected 30 into 2. So I have to move from this point because this is where actually um, from here to here is represented from here to here, which is 30. So I've cut through it into 2. That's 30 divided by 2. It ends here, but this is not the reference line. Reference line is at F and G. Sorry, it's at F and H. So I have to see pull it down all through from this point down to H. So if I'm pulling down from this point to this point, I've covered this height 40 millimeter. Also down to what the reference line, I've covered this height 10 millimeter. So I'll simply add plus 40 plus 10. And this will simply give me 30 divided by 2 is 15. 15 plus 40 is 55. 55 plus 10 is actually 65. So I have um, 65 millimeter. So that becomes the central distance x for that first segment. Okay, for the second segment, same thing, let's find the central point. Okay, so this happens to be the central point now. And I want to bisect, I'm looking for central distance x for the second segment. Remember, this height represents the y axis for the segments, for that segment. Meanwhile, this base or this width represents what? The x axis for the centroid for this, um, for this particular segment. So for me to find the central, for us to find the central distance in the x-axis, it means I have to bisect what the base, which is simply what cutting through what this is the x-axis, cutting through the base, which is here. And if I cut through this base, this base is given as what 10 millimeters. So I will simply have 10 divided by 2. But cutting through this base doesn't end here. I need to take it down to the reference line. So which means I'll move all the way from this point to the reference line, covering what this height 10 millimeters, I'll take it down to the reference line. So I have to add the 10 millimeters, so I have plus 10. And this is now equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 plus 10 simply gives us 15 millimeters. So you have that, okay?
Okay, so finally, we are the third segment now. Let's look at the central point. Okay, which is called the center of mass. All right, so this is the central point somewhere here. Don't mind my diagram, please. Okay, now I want to call through the X plane. I told you that for this segment, this represents the Y axis, while this represents the X plane. So, which means I need to bisect the X plane into two. Notice now that bisecting the S plane into two, uh, it takes me straight towards the reference line. So, which means I don't need to add any value again to it. I'm already on the reference line. And the X plane itself is giving us what 50 millimeter, which is the width of this particular segment. So, I'll simply have 50 divided by two. So, for the third segment, I have 50 divided by two. And that is simply equal to 25, okay? So this gives me the central distance in the x-axis. Next, to find a centroid distance in the y, so we have centroid distance y. Okay, so this is actually what cutting through now the y plane. It is saying we have to now cut through the y plane. So we did we, in the first case we cut through the x-plane. Now we want to cut, cut through the y plane. And for the first shape, I've told you this height from a to b represents the y axis and the value is simply what 10 millimeter that's the y plane so if i cut through 10 i will simply have this which is actually 10 divided by 2 so i put it down 10 divided by 2 but it doesn't end there i have to take it down to where the reference line 10 divided by 2 is simply from here to this point i still have to move all the way from this point to this point then from this point to get to the reference line so moving from this point to this point is actually what adding 40 millimeter to it Okay, and then moving from this point to this point is simply this height, 10 millimeter. So we simply add 40 plus 10, 40 millimeter plus 10, and this is actually equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5, plus 5 plus uh, 50 is simply 55. So I have 55, okay. Next is the second segment. For the second component, also, this represents the Y of the second component. So bisect the y axis into two and the y axis here is simply this distance from here to here which is giving us what 40 millimeter so i simply have 40 divided by two okay 40 divided by two but it doesn't end there i have to send it down to where 40 divided by two is simply from this point to this point not at the reference line yet i still have to pull it down to the reference line so which means i will simply add this height of what 10 millimeters before it gets to the reference line so we have plus 10 plus 10 and this is simply equal to 40 divided by 2 is 20 20 plus 10 simply gives us 30 okay so we have this and then finally we find the we bisect was the third segment the y axis of the, the y plane of the third segment okay so of course this is the y plane of the third segment so I've simply cut through the Y plane. If I cut through the Y plane, of course, I'm already down to the reference line. The Y plane is even as what 10 millimeter. That's the Y plane. The height is 10 millimeter. And of course, I'm already at where um, the reference line F and H. So which means I'm not adding anything to get the reference line. So I'll simply have 10 divided by 2. So this gives me 10 divided by 2. And that's simply what 5 millimeter. Okay. So this gives us the central distance x and central distance y. The next thing to do, I said, find the product of each of the areas and each of the centroid distance. So we we'll start with ax, the area of the first segment times central distance x. That gives us as. So we have for the first shape, we have 300 multiplied by 65. So this gives us 300 times 65. And that's simply equal to, okay. All right, so that gives us 19,500. So we'll have 19,500. Okay. All right, so next is the area of the second segment multiplied by central distance in the X. So we we'll have 300, sorry. So we we'll have 400 multiplied by 15. Okay, so 400 by 15. 400 multiplies 15. And this is equal to... That gives us simply 6,000, okay? And finally, we have the area of the third shape and the central distance x. 
which is 500 multiplied by 25. So I have 500 multiplies 25, and that's simply equal to 500. That gives us 12,500. Okay, so you have this. All right. So after obtaining the area and the central distance in the x, next is also to obtain area and central distance in the y. Product of a and y. So we have a times y. Still, still same thing. The area for the first segment is 300. Central distance y here is 55. So we simply have 300 multiplies 55. Okay, this is equal to that gives us 16,500. 16,500. Okay. The next is the area of the second segment, which is 400, multiplied by central distance y, which is 30. So we have 400 multiplied by 30. So that simply means that 400 multiplied by 30 is actually 12,000. Okay, and finally, the third area, which is 500 multiplied by central distance y, which is 5. So we have 500 multiplied by 5. And of course, this will give us uh, 2,500. Okay. All right. So you have this. Okay. So after obtaining this summation, after obtaining these uh, results or this product, we sum them up. So summation AX, sum the a product of the area and central distance X together. And uh, this will simply give us summation AX. So we add up 19,500. Okay. 19,500 plus 6,000 plus 12,500. That's simply 38,000. Okay, so we'll have this summation. Next is to sum the product of the area and um, the central distance y. So we'll have summation a, y, and that simply gives us, okay, so we'll add up 16,500 plus 12,000 plus 2,500. That simply gives us 31,000. So we have 31,000, okay? If we've known this now, then centroid in the X, centroid in the X, okay, which means the middle portion of X is simply what? Summation of the area times um, central distance X all over summation of area. And that's simply equal to summation AX simply gave us 38,000. So we simply have 38,000 divided by summation A simply gives us 1,200, 1,200. And this is equal to 38,000 divides 1,200. Okay, so we simply have 31.67 millimeter. Okay, that gives us the centroid in the x-axis. Next, we find centroid in the y-axis. Okay, that's simply y bar, and that's equal to summation area times y all over summation a, and that's simply equal to summation a y simply gave us 31,000. So we have 31,000 all over summation of the area, which here remains 1,200. All right, so centroid in the y as it simply gives us 31,000 defined. 1,200 and that gives us 25.83 millimeter okay all right so that gives us that all right guys i hope you find this video very interesting please if you do i would like to get your thoughts in the comment section don't forget to hit the like button and of course if you are new to the channel hit the subscribe button for more subscribers